Welcome. Today's lesson is on sugar and salt solutions. I have the good fortune of being able to get one of these uh, FET simulations um, and, and then work. what we're going to do is going to take a look at the differences between salt and sugar solutions and what kind of makes them tick. Kind of look under the, the hood, so to speak. So in order to get started, we first of all have to like just shake a salt shaker. That's easy. So let's go ahead and grab that and we're going to shake it all out. Make sure we get every single little granule of, of salt in our water. It's basically one um, liter. And I really like this for a couple of reasons. First of all, I'm a slob and I usually get things dirty. But you guys aren't much better than me. So uh, th this helps kind of uh, keep everything clean. So there, there's the salt. I put a lot of salt in there. And the next thing I want to do is I want to show its value. Uh, I want you to write that those numbers down right now uh, for the salt. 1.71 um, moles per liter. That's what you have to write down in the document uh, that's in your Google Classroom. So go ahead and do that right now. And what we're going to do next, we're going to test to see um, how well it will help generate electricity. And woohoo, look at that thing light up. Wow, that thing is blinding practically. It looks like somebody's hair. I used to have hair like that. But anyway, going, uh, I, I, I digress. So we're going to uh, go ahead and we're going to go put some more water in it. And if you'll notice that it's getting more and more, and of course it short circuits. Why? But anyway, uh, I'll go to the, the, this, there we go, right there. Now, uh, it's still lit up, but it's a lot more dim uh, than, than it was. Primarily because now there's fewer particles moving around. If we were to, let's say, evaporate the water, watch what happens. Now, notice I want you to also write 0.86 um, uh, moles per liter. But if I were to evaporate this, you can see that as the water is is evaporated off, the particles are still inside are, are in the water, and of course, it's more concentrated that way. So the concentration of the actual solute is becoming more and more as it evaporates and gets brighter and brighter. So, okay, we got all of that. But what's really going on with the salt? What's happening inside that solution that causes it to be able to generate electricity? Before we figure that out, let's go ahead and use sugar. Uh, I'm excuse me. Yeah, sugar. And we're going to pour up. Uh, all righty. Shows value. We got some sugar in there. Good, good, good. Um, and it's going to be measuring, of course, the values, the, the concentration of them. Uh, oh, I got to remove the salt, don't I? There we go. Got to remove that. So um, I got all the, man, I've got all of the sugar in it, and it's only 0.26 um, um, uh, moles of, uh, of sh sugar in the water. So please make sure you write that into your uh, Google Classroom document. Okay, so. Here it comes. First of all, do you think the sugar is going to generate electricity? You think? If you think it's going to generate electricity on your Google document, put yes. Make a prediction. Yes, it's going to it's going to do that. Or no, it's not. Either one. Well, hurry up. Go get, go go get it now. Okay. You back? Good. All right. Now. Now that you're back, we're going to put that right into there and look, nothing. Zero zilch squat. Well, that's kind of disappointing. Not a lot's happening there. So let's take a look maybe under the hood a little bit. So let's go to micro. And I'm going to start with sodium again. And when we do that, uh, let me see here. I'm going to reset everything here. Everybody gets back to bed and gets a good start. Okay, here we go. We're going to do sodium uh, chlorine first. Sodium chloride, uh, uh, sodium chloride, I mean, it has two elements, sodium and chloride. And those things come together, and, and they're for, they form an ionic bond, uh, and that's important. So let's go ahead and shake all of this out. Whoa! Now notice this lattice work of sodium uh, chloride. Uh, as soon as it hits the water, breaks apart, and all the particles go to their kind of separate corners. They're moving around. They're making friends. They're seeing the, uh, their neighbors, but they're just always moving around. And when they're doing that, basically they're ions. And because of that movement, and because of the fact they separate themselves, and because they're ionic, they're able to basically generate electricity. And that's why they're really good electrolytes, like in sports drinks. 
So that's how that one works. So let's now see what's going on with, let's remove the solute, there we go. Now we're gonna uh, go to sucrose or sugar, and we're gonna, wow, they're big, they're bad boys. Now if you look at the, the formula, you can see there's a lot of elements in that, whereas sodium chloride, there's only two. But there's quite a few in this one. Make sure I get everybody out, okay, good. Now notice what happened, as soon as it hit the water, when they were all clumped together, they did break apart, but the sucrose itself stays together. There are no positive, there are no negatives. Well, there are, but they're, they're pretty bound up with, with each other because they're covalent. They're really a, a, a more tight-knit, so to speak. So they're just kind of bouncing around in there. So I, I think we have seen kind of the difference between the two. The, uh, the uh, sodium chloride is ionic, and it, it breaks into very small particles. And it's, of course, the ions within that water uh, will be able to pick up electricity. Whereas sucrose, because it's so big and, it, and it's bulky and it's, it's got a covalent bond, it's not going to break apart quite as easily. So it can't be a very good electrolyte. So there you have it. I hope that's helped you. And we'll be seeing you in the lab very, very soon. Thanks. And thanks for watching. Bye.